Okay, so this is the Laval Montreal Ottawa flood of 2019, our second hundred year flood in three years. When we bought the house, everybody told us that it had never flooded in response to any of the previous high water levels. Now in owning it for seven years, it's flooded twice. So I thought maybe it'd be kind of uh, useful for us, maybe for future homeowners, for anybody to talk a little bit about how we've tried to flood proof the house in anticipation of the water levels getting even higher. So there's three basic problems associated with um, flooding in your house. <clears throat> the first one is basically keeping the river out of your house. So the classic way to deal with that, of course, is sandbags. And so we have over here sort of the classic sandbag wall as though it would be separated from uh, your house itself. Now you could build an entire sandbag wall like this away from the house. But the problem is if you're short on sandbags or if the water gets too high, then basically it will flow over the top and then you'll have to retreat back to the house. So in our case, a better strategy is to basically start at the house right away, where the house becomes essentially the sandbag barrier where possible. And then what you need to do is you need to put sandbags on the plastic that goes up against the side of the house and then along the ground. So that the sandbags, the weight of the sandbags holds the plastic down and therefore keeps the flood out of your house. So we have a hybrid here where we have plastic against the house, then along the ground with sandbags weighing it down. And then because we don't want the water going around the side of the house, we have a more sort of traditional sandbag wall with plastic along the bottom, uh, sandbags on top of it in multiple levels, uh, weighing it down and keeping the water from flowing uh, into the house. So that's problem number one is keeping the flood out of the house, keeping the river out of the house. Problem number two is that even if you kept the river out of your house, you're essentially sitting on super saturated soil. So you have water seeping up underneath the house, which can go through any cracks in your pavement and can come up in any sort of opening that you have in the house. So problem number three we're combating, ideally you would combat it with a French drain along the outside of the house with sump pumps on the outside of the house that would then suck out the water. We don't have that, at least not yet, so what we've done is we basically dug several holes in the side of the house or uh, outside of the house and set up sump pumps that are buried uh, into the ground on the outside of the house. So they'll keep the water table relatively low and therefore hopefully stop the water from just seeping up through the concrete of the bottom of the foundation. So there's one. Now if you notice, in this case, we didn't sandbag right against the doors of the house, which enabled us, therefore, to have a, a hole dug on the outside and a sump pump. You can sandbag right against the side of the house and right up against the door, but then you don't have the capability of putting a sump pump between your sandbag barrier and the house, thereby preventing you from pumping out water that accumulates against the side of the house and also uh, pumping down the water table from outside the house. Temporarily pumping down the water table. So that's one of our outside pumps that is hopefully keeping the groundwater relatively low. We have another one around on the outside of the house here that we dug the day before. And so down here we have a second sump pump that is also working to try and keep water uh, on the outside of the house relatively low. So there's two of those. Now, of course, the other problem is that inside the house, you can potentially have a problem as well. And that is water can be coming up underneath the foundation inside the house. So more traditional sump pumps or sumps in the side of the house are basically in low corners and dug down through the gravel. So we have two. One of them is here. This is our biggest one. And so any water that's accumulating underneath the foundation and coming up on the inside of the house gets pumped out of here. 
Now, because there's so many sump pumps that we have a suboptimal one here, and it's not turning on until the water is getting higher than we like. So hopefully we can have a better pump control. These kind of float controls are not very good. Instead, you want the electric ones, which we have in the other corner. So our other sump pump is now over in this corner here which was an impromptu one that we created after the house started flooding. And so down here, we have another sump pump that is keeping the water quite low. This sump pump uh, is actually on one of the electronic uh, sensors, which is working much better. So it has much finer control over the level of the water inside the house. Now that's two of the problems, the flood staying out of your house, and um, keeping the water table low underneath your house. The third problem is that you can have water coming up holes in your house in the sense of drains. So we have a septic system, unfortunately, and the septic system has low points at several locations in the house. One of them, of course, would be the basement shower. So we dealt with that one uh, by putting a plastic bag over top of the drain and then a sandbag over top of that. The final potential opening for the septic system into the house, back flooding through the pipes, is in the garage. And we've had the same approximate solution to that, which is to cover up the specific pipe that comes up into the sump here with a plastic bag and then a sandbag over top of that. So that's how we've attempted to flood proof our house. The water levels are likely to get even worse. So we have more sandbags delivered by the city. And we have a lot of hope that we can keep the water out of the house since we paid almost $40,000 on renovations from the flood two years ago. Wish me luck. So one more thing. Uh, with these sump pumps running, you need to keep them running if you're going to keep the water out of your house. And if you live in a flood prone area, that is also prone to power outages, as we do, then it makes sense to have a generator. We have two generators, one we inherited from the previous owners of the house, a large, uh, expensive, noisy one. And we also recently bought uh, another one that is more useful for emergency purposes. It's a Honda inverter, EU2200i. And if the power goes out, we're gonna plug at least some of our sump pumps into this. Uh, the 2200 should be sufficient to start sump pumps, uh, which require more power on starting. So uh, that's a final thing you might want to consider if you live in flood prone areas and have uh, uh, that also are prone to power outages, a double whammy, if you will.